everyone, welcome. If you're new here, I cover mostly Canadian true crime here on my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the case of Lois Hanna. This video is going to be kind of short because there's really not much to go off of at all. This case was actually suggested by my coworker Kara, so we'll give a shout out to Kara this week. So let's just jump right into it, guys. Lois Hanna was born on February 3rd, 1963, in Wingham, Ontario, to Ernest and Olive Hanna. She was the youngest of five siblings and actually had four older brothers. And Lois was raised to be very self-sufficient. The Hanna family lived on a farm near Holy Rood, which is located southwest of King Carden, Ontario. Her brother Jim described her as a wonderful person. She was a very approachable person. It was not judgmental at all. She was bubbly and full of life. It was a tradition every year that Lois would do the Christmas shopping for her family. Her brothers Jim and Dave would give their credit cards to Lois and she would do all the shopping and wrap everyone's gifts for them. It was something the whole family looked forward to every year. Her brother Jim said the whole family loved it because no one knew what anyone was getting, so it was a huge surprise for everyone on Christmas Day when they unwrapped their presents. Lois loved Christmas, and after her passing, the family didn't look forward to the holiday without her. Lois was a former beauty queen and was crowned Mid Miss Western Ontario, and she graduated from the fashion design program at Fanshawe College. Lois worked at a woman's clothing store in King Carden, and forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, by the name of um, McGee's. And according to her brother, she absolutely loved working there. Earlier that year, in March of 1988, Lois's father, Ernest, ended up passing away. And shortly after that, Lois moved to a bungalow on Nelson Street in King Carden, Ontario. On July 3, 1988, Lois attended the Celebrate in 88 homecoming dance. The dance was in luck now, and her brother Dave was also in attendance at the dance that night. Lois had to open the clothing store the next morning, so she didn't want to stay too late. She left the dance around 11.45 p.m. that night and then drove the 30-minute drive from Lucknow to King Carden. The police estimated Lois arrived home around 12.15 a.m. that night. The next morning at 11 a.m., Debbie, her boss, arrived at the store the next morning and was surprised to see that the doors were still locked. Lois should have been there an hour previously to unlock the store for the day. Her boss, Debbie, was concerned, so she sent a co-worker over to check on Lois as this was completely out of character for her. Her boss, Debbie, also called her brother, Dave. He was completely surprised to hear that she hadn't shown up for the day, as Again, this was very unlike her. Her coworker went over to Lois's house on Nelson Street and found that her Pontiac Grand Dam was still in the driveway. After knocking at the door and receiving no answer, her coworker was concerned, so she tried the doors into Lois's house and all of them were locked. Her coworker feared that Lois might be in distress, so she found an unlocked window and climbed in to check on her. There she found that the TV was on and that there was a half drank cup of tea sitting on the counter, but no signs of Lois. The outfit Lois had worn to the dance the night before was hung back up in her closet and her purse was left behind. They said Lois's purse was still there. I, as soon as I heard the purse was there, I, I don't care if that house was on fire. She would have never left that place without the purse. She always you had to have money, you had to have your ID, and you had to have makeup. I mean, that was her thing, you know. So. Yoan Sound Police suggested that Lois could have run away and didn't take her disappearance seriously in the beginning. The Hannah family grew frustrated with the police, so they took it upon themselves to look for Lois. Word got out that the family needed help looking for her, and the next day hundreds of people showed up to help look for Lois. The family hired private planes to look in the area, and they also offered a $10,000 reward for any information leading to Lois's location. The police would not allow the Hanna family to set up an office at either the town fire hall or a school. The family reluctantly used Lois's home as a headquarters for her case, which would ultimately be a very bad idea as it would destroy any potential evidence that could help further this case. The Hanna family not being left much choice, they really didn't have many other options because the police just left them alone to figure it out on their own. Four days later, the OPP finally joined the investigation and the communication between the police and the family did improve. The only usable evidence was two pea-sized drops of blood found by Lois's side door. All that was known about the blood sample is that it came from a male. In 1998, DNA narrowed the blood sample down to 14 people, and all but one person on the list has been excluded. It is unclear what happened to the last person that was on that list. The police won't speculate whether or not this was the person they were focusing on in 1988. Dave Hanna remembers the moment he last saw his sister leave a dance in Lucknow. And then I watched her leave. Like it was, I watched her head out the arena floor. As far as I know, she left by herself. But Lois was never seen again. Her family and police have a suspect in mind, but have yet to lay any charges. This year marks 30 years since her disappearance. It's year 30 for us, which is uh, uh, unbelievable. It's taken 30 years has gone by and it's still as fresh with us. The Hannah family initially rejected the idea that the person knew Lois. 
as they said anyone who knew her would not want to hurt her. So in the beginning, they were convinced it must have been a stranger. But as the evidence becomes more clear, it might have actually been a person who did know Lois. There was no disturbance in her home and nothing was taken. There was nothing out of the ordinary other than the fact that Lois just was not there. Her brother says, looking back on it, it seems pretty obvious. Confirmed to be missing from the home was a peach nightgown with a matching robe that the family assumes Lois was wearing that night she went missing, which tells us Lois was home long enough to do her nightly routine. The police believe she was either followed home from that dance that night, or her home was being watched, waiting for her return. Either way, they believe she was targeted one way or another. Dave Hanna watched his mother pass away without knowing what happened to her daughter. So that was her greatest fear, is that, that, we would, that she would pass on and not know what happened to her daughter. And we watched it happen. I'll tell you what, that just, yeah, that just tears the heart rate out of you. As of 2019, there would be some help for the case for Lois. The website pleasebringmehome.com had three separate tips that were all very similar, which caused them to do another search to look for Lois's remains. Well, new information leads to a new search in a 31-year-old cold case. Lois Hanna's disappearance from King Garden has haunted the community and her family since the summer of 1988. And all these years later, there's hope Hanna's family will get the closure they're looking for. CTV's Nicole Lampa is in our newsroom with this tonight, and Nicole, police are not involved in this latest search. Megan, while the OPP say they they still consider this a missing persons case. A pair of amateur detectives are organizing a search for Lois Hanna. A small but significant new detail is leading them to look in an area north of Lucknow. It would have been right in this area. Graham Hunter was 12 years old when he found something strange in a gravel pit. You know, picked it up and dangled it for him and said, hey, look, a bra, and then we dropped it on the ground. Years later, Hunter realized the bra could be a clue into Lois Hanna's disappearance. And I forgot about it for years until the OPP put out a call for tips, and then it popped back in my head. I mentioned it to them, and that is what eventually led me being here. Her brother spoke to CTV last year. We know she made it to King Garden. We know she was in the house of King Garden. What happened that night, we, uh, we are still missing some details on, yes, for sure. Also missing, Hannah's peach nightgown. A woman was said to be wearing one near this bush, close to where the bra was found. There are also reports a woman's scream was heard that night in the same area. Cadaver dogs also searched the area, looking for any remains that may belong to Lois. The area they were searching is about four kilometers south of Holyrood. It is a dense wooded area with some rough terrain. It is located behind the property of the person who claims they heard a woman screaming that night between 2 and 3 a.m. the night Lois disappeared. Hannah enlisted some help to try and get his sister's disappearance back on people's minds. Nick Oldreeve and Matthew Knopper were handing out these bracelets to participants of this year's reunion dance in Lucknow. Many of the same people were at the dance in 1988, where a 25-year-old Lois Hanna was last seen alive. Just bring it to the forefront again um, and make sure it's always out there. Take the stigma away that it's an uncomfortable conversation to talk about. The more we talk about it, the sooner we're going to get the answers we need. But Nick and his team of amateur sleuths are looking for clues as well, specifically pictures from that 1988 Lucknow reunion dance where Lois was last seen. A person of interest may be in some of those pictures, and they'd like to place him at the dance, if possible. If that individual's placed at that dance, then we can start to look at locations that that individual frequented after Lois went missing. Tips and pictures have already started coming in. Even even 30 years later, we're, we're finding people, that one person we just spoke to, who had never been interviewed by, by the OPP. And she said, the cops go, where'd this guy go? Of course, then she comes back, and... Uh... For Dave Hanna, after years of trying to find answers about his sister's disappearance and presumed murder on his own, he's hopeful that with some more people on the case, his sister's unresolved story may finally reach a conclusion. That would be good. It's long enough, I think. Nick Oldreeve and Matthew Knopper also think that's too long. They're taking on the task of trying to find Lois Hanna's body to bring closure for the family. We're not looking for the what, why, when, how. We're looking for just where these people are. Um, if we can just help bring these people home, it's it's deserving for the families. It's, it's, it's just it's time to do that. It's been far too long. Lois was 25 years old at the time she went missing. She is described as 5 foot 4, 120 pounds, with brown curly hair. Lois's disappearance has been compared to Lisa Mays, 
who also went missing in July of 1988, but so far no links have ever been established between the two women. There were searches and rewards and pleas for information. A link to serial killer Paul Bernardo was quickly disproven. Connections to the disappearance of Lisa Moss 15 days later up in Owen Sound also turned up nothing. Hannah believes someone from that dance in Lucknow is to blame for Lois going missing. We don't believe Lois left on her own. No question about that. We believe she came under came to harm that night. And Dave thinks he knows who that person is and where they live. He even visited that eastern Ontario town several years ago. Although previously OPP investigators were willing to confirm that they did have a suspect in mind in the Lois Hanna case, investigators now aren't even willing to confirm that her case is classified as an unsolved murder. The Lois Hanna case is a continues to be a missing person investigation. We cannot rule out foul play in that investigation. However, it has remained a missing person investigation since it started. The reward is now up to $50,000 with any information that can lead the family to solving this case. The Hannah brothers are now all in their middle age and are doing their best to try to move on. But even if they find out what happens to Lois, they likely will never be able to move on from this. What the Hannah family has gone through is honestly absolutely devastating to just never know what happened to your sister ever to just never know. It's just, it's very tragic. I feel so bad for them. That's all I have for today, guys. If you have any case suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, bye, guys.